Hello and welcome to your Breakthrough Hour. I'm Reverend Paul Moses and it's a joy to meet you today. If you're watching us for this very first time, you're most welcome to be part of a time when God will meet you through the power of His Word and meet you at the point of your need. Those of you who are joining us regularly, big warm welcome. I appreciate you and I really thank God for making His Word a blessing in your life. And today, it's going to be another powerful time in the Word. Shall we go? I want to talk to us about things that strengthen our prayer life. Prayer is associating, communicating, fellowshipping with God. And there are different kinds of prayer. Prayer of petition, supplication, prayer of casting our cares on the Lord, and prayer of fellowshipping with God, which is devotion, so on and so forth. But essentially, praying to ask God to deal with our situations, asking God for our needs, that's an important prayer that we usually pray. And we're going to look into the things beginning from today that can really fortify our prayer. Things that can become a foundation for our prayer. Things that can be like the backbone for our prayer. Because it's not only the prayer that really touches God and, and makes an impact and brings the answer. But actually, the life behind the man who prays, the life behind prayer is so very important. And as God allows, we're going to see a few factors. And I believe this will be a blessing to your life. Let's go to Joshua chapter 14. I'm going to read verse 6. Then the children of Judah came to Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh the Kenesite said to him, You know the word which the Lord said to Moses the man of God concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. Now, this is after the long wilderness wandering, and now Israel had stepped into the promised land under their new leader, Joshua. They've been fighting battles, and, and quite a part of land has been conquered. And now it's a time to divide the land among the tribes. So Joshua is here uh, in the seat, and the different tribes come and petition him and, and claim their own inheritance. And in that line, we see Judah coming and asking Joshua. And in Judah, there's, there's a particular uh, family headed by a man called Caleb. And we know Caleb is a very significant person because he was sent along with Joshua and the ten other men to go into the promised land that was many years ago under the leadership of Moses to spy out the promised land. When 10 of those spies brought evil report, spoke unbelievingly of the good land, two spoke in faith, and, and that is Caleb and Joshua, Joshua and Caleb. And all the others, a whole generation, in fact, belonging to the ten spies, they died, and even Moses died, and a new generation comes in, and Joshua is the leader. The amazing thing is Caleb is still alive. And he is making a very powerful statement when he comes to claim his inheritance. Praying is actually coming to claim our inheritance. 
which is rightful because of what Jesus did on the cross. Jesus paid it all. That's why he says when he died on the cross, he said, it is finished. We read that in John chapter 19. It is finished. He paid the price that we can become rightful heirs of everything that God owns. In fact, in Galatians chapter 3, Paul writes so many scriptures which tell us that because we are Christ's, we are children of Abraham, and we are children of God, and we are heirs of the blessing that belongs to Abraham. So that is prayer. You're praying for something, if it's health, healing, if it's finances, if it's for your children, whatever you're praying for, even for your future and, and a good life, whatever it is, remember, you don't come to pray just as a give me person, you know, just asking God, give me, give me, give me, no. You pray on the basis of what Jesus has paid on behalf of you on the cross by shedding his blood, giving his life, that you are a co-heir. You are joined heir with Christ. We see that in Romans chapter 8. If we are heirs, then we are joined heirs in Christ. So you come with a heart of Asking God in a rightful way, give me because Jesus has paid. And that prayer is really powerful. Here, Caleb mentions something in verse 6 of Joshua 14. You know the word which the Lord said to Moses. You know the word which the Lord said to Moses concerning you and me. That was a statement Caleb was making to Joshua. Caleb was saying, there's a word that God had spoken. It's many decades ago. But you know the word about me. So actually, Caleb knew what God had spoken many years before. That was actually settled in his heart. That was written in his heart as if written on the stone tablets. You know, he didn't forget that word. That's so important. God always sends his word, and he has put his word, his promises in the word of God, in the scriptures. And in life's journey, when we are God's children, when we walk with him, when we seek him, he sends his word here and there at the right time for us, sometimes in the middle of a situation when we seek him. Sometimes even before a situation comes, God gives a word. You know, at different times, he gives a word. And it's up to us that we need to grasp it. We need to hold on to it. We need to actually lay hold of it and keep it in our hearts. And that's so important that we don't forget the word that God gives us. You know, situations uh, um, are not constant. They will be changing. But God, who has given his word, if he has sent the word, it is not going to return unto him void. We read that in Isaiah 55. But it will accomplish the thing for that which it has been sent for. Caleb did something. He held on to the word. He believed that word. Now we're going to read in a while what that word is going to be. But he believed that word. 
he held on to that word. Praise God. And that word, Caleb says, I remember it even after so many decades. If our prayers need to be powerful, we need to have God's word in our heart. It should be settled in our hearts. We need to hold on to his word. Now, how do you think Caleb was able to remember the word? Many times people receive a word, but then they, they remember it for a while, after which they forget it. How did Caleb remember that word? I believe it is because Caleb was repeatedly thinking about God's word, even though the situations were so strange, negative, because they were in the desert, and now God had commanded the children of Israel to wander uh, because they did not believe in his word. And, you know, it's very difficult, a lot of disappointment, frustration, because they were almost close to the promised land. They could have taken over the land. And because of the rest of the people, they disbelieved. Caleb and Joshua had to go through a pain which they were not responsible for. Sometimes you may not be responsible for the pain that you are going through in your life or marriage or finances. Maybe it's someone else's mistake. Maybe it's the devil that has done so many things. And you're going through what you are not the reason for. The amazing thing is Caleb still was not frustrated in that frustrating situation. He was not a quitter in that tough journey of the next 40 years or so. Why? He held on to the word of God. Now, what did Moses say? Moses said in verse 9, So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance, that is Caleb, Caleb's inheritance, and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. Moses spoke, and it was God speaking through Moses, a personal prophecy, a personal promise to Caleb that no matter what is going to happen, Caleb will still enter the promised land after that 40 years, and he and his children will inherit forever that portion that place, that land which Caleb had stepped and trodden with his feet. Hey, man, hallelujah. Now, when Moses would have spoken those words, Caleb's heart would have jumped for joy as we usually get excited and delighted when God sends a personal promise or a prophecy from his word to us, a rhema. It excites anybody for that matter. But for Caleb, it was not just mere excitement for a moment. It was not a moment's delight. Caleb was literally hanging, holding on to that word for the next 40 long years, 40 difficult years, 40 frustrating years. Now, we are going to see you know, Caleb's prayer answered later on in the series. What I'm trying to do now is we are looking into the background of Caleb's powerful prayer. The background is Caleb was able to hold on to the word even in the midst of pain in the midst of struggle, in the midst of wandering, in the midst of frustrating circumstances, in the midst of a life and problems for which 
he was not absolutely responsible because it was a ten spies and and other people who did not believe nor they wanted to nor they wanted to believe in God's word but Caleb believed in the word yet he was thrust into the wilderness for the next 40 years along with Joshua but that would never let him get disappointed or quit or become weary is your journey seeming long is your journey seeming frustrating i want to tell you if god has given you a word and i'm sure god has even now when you seek him he will remind you of the word that he gave you even now when you get into the word and ask god he's going to give his word to you hold on to it hold on to it now caleb held on to that word for 40 years now this was his practice even before now when they went 40 days the 12 spies into canaan and they brought back a word we're going to look at that how caleb's profession or confession was different from the other people other spies and what was the reason let's read verse 7 and 8 i was 40 years old when moses the servant of the lord sent me from kadesh barnea to spy out the land and i brought back word to him as it was in my heart again remember he says i brought back word word i brought back word praise god was eight. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. The margin says, the courage of the people fail. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. Amen. So what was the word that he was referring to? That word was the promise God had given as a corporate promise to the children of Israel. We, we read that in Exodus chapter three and god had given them in verse eight so i've come down to deliver them out of the hand of the egyptians and to bring them up from the land to a good and large land to a land flowing with milk and honey to the place of the canaanites and the hittites and the amorites and the Perizzites and the hevites and the jebusites now that was god's promise to deliver them from egypt to bring them into a good and large land, which is land flowing with milk and honey. So this was the word God had spoken to Moses and through Moses to the children of Israel before they would even begin their journey from Egypt. And this was a promise to every Israelite every family in Israel, every tribe in Israel, the whole nation of Israel. And you see, Caleb tapped into that promise and held on to it. When the 12 spies were sent into the promised land to search out and come back with the report, the 10 spies, they said that they, they were giants and we were like grasshoppers. And it was the same situation that Caleb and Joshua were looking at, but Caleb had kept this promise in his heart. So, so he said, yes, there may be giants, but God has given us a promise. He has said that he will bring us into this land. It is a land flowing with milk and honey. And if God has said he will bring us, it's going to happen. He's going to be with us. He's going to Defeat the giants for us. He is going to make the way. Because God has said, he has spoken. Now, that is the kind of faith that Caleb had. He had the word settle in his heart. And that's what he says in verse 8. When all the other ten spies, they spoke things just as they saw with their physical eyes, natural eyes. 
Caleb would see the situation through the eyes of faith, through the lens of God's word, which means, yes, there are challenges, but God has said he's going to bring me through. I will have it. And we know the response of Caleb and Joshua on that day when they came back, you know, they were so excited. They said, let's go up now and we are well able to possess the land. In Numbers chapter 13, we read that we are well able to possess the land in verse 30. That's because they had the word in their heart. Now, that's what he says. When the 10 people made others to be discouraged with their statement of unbelief, but I wholly followed the Lord my God, Joshua 14, verse 8. I wholly followed the Lord my God. Now, that's an important factor. If our prayer needs to be strong, powerful, bringing answers, getting breakthroughs from heaven, then we need to have this heart of wholly following the Lord. Now, what does it mean? It means... Having God's word in your heart, holding on to that word, no matter whatever the situation is. Amidst all that negatively seeming circumstances with the giants who are strong, with the fortified cities that are highly walled, with all kinds of enemies, Caleb would still say, I'm not going to get frustrated. I'm not going to get moved. I'm not going to turn my back. I'm not going to get discouraged. You know what? God has given a word and he will fulfill it. Amen. And I'm going to stand on that word. I'm going to hold fast to that word. I'm going to live my life because God has spoken it, I will continue this journey. I will continue this road, even though it might be a difficult road. And that's exactly what Caleb did. Firstly, he believed God's corporate promise to the children of Israel that even when he saw giants before him, he would say, God has promised and I'm going to win, and I'm going to possess the land. Secondly, when Moses spoke a personal word to Caleb, saying, you and your children, you're going to inherit that land. It's going to happen because you follow the Lord with, with all your heart. He took that promise again and, and walked Forty and five years. Now, that's a long wait for anybody. I don't know how long you've been fighting your battles. You feel that it's been very stressful, distressing, discouraging. You've been waiting for things to happen, for problems to be solved, for issues to be sorted out, and you feel it's getting longer every day. I want to encourage you, my friend. There is an answer. God has spoken in his word. And the promise that God has given you is your strength. And all you need to do is do what Caleb did. We'll talk about the patience of Abraham. God called him in 75 years, but he gave him a child when he was about 100 years old. But Caleb waited even longer than Abraham, 45 years of a frustrating journey in desert, but Caleb would never resign to that frustration. He would reject it. He would say, because God said, I'll get there. So I'll get there to my land, which is flowing with milk and honey. He said many of his generation, they were dying on the way. Many, many died, you know. In fact, the whole generation died. But Caleb would say, because God said, I will possess, I will live. Amen. He had a word in his heart.
Hide the word in your heart by believing it, by holding on to it, by hanging the entire weight of your life on that word that God has spoken of your life and its worth in the end. Now that's the kind of faith that we need to hold on to and then be a man of prayer, a woman of prayer. And I know that always works. So I want to pray with you. We're going to see over the next episodes how Caleb had more factors in his life, in his faith life that made him a candidate to possess what he prayed for, what he petitioned for in the end. But now we're going to ask God for our blessings, for our needs, and we're going to pray. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for it is by a divine appointment that you have brought this moment. I pray for everyone who's connected today. Yes, Lord, especially those who feel I'm going through a hard path in my life, which I'm not responsible for. I didn't commit that mistake that I should have this pain in my life. I didn't make a wrong choice. It was someone else's choice, but it has affected my life. It has affected my health. It has affected my life's journey or finances, family, my peace and on and on, Lord. Whatever that kind of a journey, that your child is going through, Lord. Today, your eyes have been set upon that person and I give you praise, wonderful Jesus. And though Caleb was thrust into a journey for which he was not responsible for, though he believed he was still pushed into that journey in wilderness, 45 years. Yet, Lord, he made that decision, that choice to hold on to your word because you have located Caleb. You have spoken a word to him and he held on to that word. No matter how frustrating the situation was, Caleb said, my God is faithful and he will do it for me. I'm not going to look at what's happening around me. I'm not going to look at the journey that I'm going through, but I'm going to look at my God and his word that he has given me. Father, I pray that settled faith shall be the portion of your child today. And through that, I pray you will, you will give them the tenacity, the strength to move on and never to be a quitter, to go forward and see the healing and see the blessing and see the breakthrough that you ordained for them, the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey that you have ordained for them in Christ. So I release strength right now. I release courage. I release blessings right now. I release for people who need healing. I release healing right now. Those of you who need a breakthrough in their jobs, I release that breakthrough. I release finances for those who are struggling in Jesus' name, and they will see your blessings in their life. Thank you, Father. You did it for Caleb. You will do it for us. We receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. I know God has touched you today through His Word, no matter how long your journey had been. But I want to tell you, that is coming to an end. You are stepping in your promised land. You're going to see what God has promised in your life. Be tenacious, holding on to that promise that God has given you. If He did for Caleb, He's doing it for you. God bless you. And those of you who want to write to us, please write to us your prayer requests. You can call our prayer volunteers. They're waiting for your call. They will pray with you. And I believe that it's going to be a blessing to you. We're going to see more of this in the week to come. God bless.